Bound buttonholes are a great alternative to machine worked buttonholes. They are commonly found on coats, but if made narrower, can also be used on lighter garments. In this tutorial, I am using boiled wool, so imagine that this buttonhole would be at the centre front of a coat. To begin, we need to figure out how wide we want the buttonhole to be by measuring the diameter of the button we are going to use. Make sure to add the depth of the button to this number, otherwise the button won't fit through the buttonhole. We work our bound buttonhole on the flat pattern piece from the right side before we sew the garment up. For this example, I am treating this selvage edge as the edge of the pattern piece. I am then drawing in a line 1.5cm from the raw edge to act as my sewing line. My next line is the centre front of the garment. If you are using a commercial paper pattern, this should be marked on the pattern piece. For this sample, I am marking the centre front 3cm away from the sewing line, as this is the diameter of the button I am using. This will centre the edge of the button between the centre front and the edge of the coat. Next, I draw in where I want the opening of my buttonhole to go. I want the finished width of my buttonhole to be 3.5cm, but this needs to be offset slightly so that the buttonhole extends past the centre front by 3mm. I then draw in vertical lines to clearly indicate the edge of the buttonhole. I check the width of the buttonhole against my button. At this point I thought it looked a bit big so I re-measured it to make sure it was exactly 3.5cm. I then draw in the finished height of my buttonhole. For this heavier wool, I want each welt, that is the fold of fabric that covers the buttonhole opening, to be 6mm wide. I then begin tacking in all of these chalk lines. I have to be honest with you, this takes a long time, but it is so important to do. We want to be able to see these lines from both sides of the fabric, and tacking is the most accurate way to do that. I am using a bright red thread here so that it is easier to see, but you may want to consider using a colour that matches your fabric. You will see later how tricky it can be to get these stitches out and it was impossible to remove every trace of red. We can now see our markings on the wrong side of the fabric as well. Then we cut the fabric patch that will create our welts. This needs to be as wide as the buttonhole plus 2.5mm and at least 5 times as tall as the total width of the buttonhole plus a little extra for seam allowance. Fold this rectangle in half widthways to find the centre and finger press the crease in place. We then need to centre the patch over the buttonhole. I measure a mark where the edge of the patch needs to come to and then using a pin I match the centre of the patch to the centre line of the buttonhole. I then pin and tack the patch in place. Then, working from the wrong side, I'm going to stitch around the outside of my buttonhole, following my tacking exactly. I turn my stitch length down to 1 to get very short stitches, and then carefully position my buttonhole in place so that I can stitch along my tacking lines very precisely. When you start sewing, do not reverse, just leave a long tail of thread. When you get to the corners, go very slowly, turning the flywheel by hand until the needle is precisely in the corner of the buttonhole. Then with the needle down, lift the presser foot and rotate your work 90 degrees to carry on sewing. Keep working in this way, pivoting at the corners until you reach the place where you started. Again, do not reverse to finish, just leave a long tail of thread. Instead, pull the bobbin threads through to the wrong side of the fabric by pulling on the top threads until a little loop appears. Then with a pin, pull that loop through and tie them off tightly with a knot. 
then trim down the threads. Then we start the long and tricky process of removing the tacking. Leave the markings for the centre front and the centre of the buttonhole, but remove everything else. Where you have stitched over the tacking, the threads may be caught tightly down. I find the best way to remove these stitches is carefully with the end of a pin, but tweezers may also be helpful. This took a really long time, but it was also very satisfying to my inner perfectionist. If I had used a matching thread, I probably could have gotten away with leaving these stitches in. Oh well. Finally, once all that tacking is out, it is time to cut open our buttonhole. You want to cut through both layers of the fabric at once, but this proved to be too much for my little pair of scissors, so I used a buttonhole chisel instead. I started by cutting diagonally into the corners from the centre. You want to cut into the corner as close as possible to the stitching without going through it. If you do cut through your stitching, it is really difficult to rescue, so I recommend taking your time and doing this very carefully. Make sure you are cutting through both layers of fabric, the front of the garment and the patch. I then cut along the centre line of tacking, joining the two V-shaped cuts I had already made together. And then I removed those final bits of tacking from the buttonhole. The next step is to push the patch through the opening from the right side to the wrong side. I suggest finger pressing the stitching lines so that you get a nice crisp edge to the buttonhole and rolling the seam between your fingers to get a nice precise fold. A bit of tacking I missed, let me just get that. Keep manipulating the buttonhole until you have a crisp rectangle and take it to the ironing board for a proper press. Make sure your iron is on the correct setting and press the buttonhole firmly from the right side. We are then going to manipulate the fabric of the patch from the wrong side to create our welts by folding it up and back on itself so that the crease is in the centre of the buttonhole. You may find it helps to press the patch up towards the buttonhole first, like this. This step can be a bit fiddly, but it is really worth taking your time to get the welt straight and even. Once you are happy, give them a press to keep them in place and then turn the buttonhole over and check them from the right side. I found that measuring my welts really helped to get them to match and once I was sure they were even, I gave them a good press with a shot of steam from both the right side and the wrong side. I then tacked the welts in place to stop them from warping out of shape. I also tacked them together using diagonal stitches to keep the buttonhole closed. To machine the welts in place, start with the buttonhole right side up and then fold back the fabric of the garment to reveal this little triangle and the folded fabric of the welt. Position the presser foot as close as possible to the edge of the buttonhole and machine the little triangle to the fabric of the welt. If your fabric is very bulky, you may want to use a zipper foot. Go backwards and forwards several times over the triangle to keep it secure and repeat for the other short edge of the buttonhole. 
Rotate the buttonhole 90 degrees and fold the fabric back along the long edge of the buttonhole and stitch as close as possible to the previous line of stitching through all the layers of seam allowance. Repeat for the other long edge. Then trim down any excess seam allowance around the edges of the patch. Although we have completed the actual buttonhole, when we make up our coat, it will be covered on the inside by a facing or a lining. For this sample, I am using this rectangle of fabric to act as a facing. I am pinning it to what would be my front pattern piece right sides together and chalking on my sewing line 1.5 centimeters from the edge. I am then stitching together along this line with about a 2.5 stitch length and reversing it beginning and end. I then grade my seam by trimming down the seam allowance of the facing to reduce bulk. I then press the seam flat before folding the facing to the inside along the seam. I roll the seam between my fingers to get a crisp edge and press that edge. As you can see, the buttonhole is completely hidden from the inside. We need to make an opening in the facing so we can actually use the buttonhole. To mark where my buttonhole is on the wrong side, I poke pins through the very corners of the buttonhole. I then take my scissors and cut through just the fabric of the facing in the same way I cut open the buttonhole earlier, starting in the middle and then cutting diagonally into the corners where the pins are. I then remove the pins from the right side. I now tuck the raw edges of the opening under so that the folded edge of the facing matches up with the stitching of the buttonhole. I then pin the folded edge in place. I use a pin to help tuck the fabric smoothly under. You may find that you haven't quite cut far enough into the corners and need to trim a little bit further to get a neat rectangle. I then slip stitch the edge of the facing down to the fabric of the welt. I am using white thread so you can see what I'm doing, but with a matching thread this stitch can be almost invisible. If you don't know how to do a slip stitch, I have a video on that. There should be a card in the top left hand corner to take you to that video around about now. I keep my stitches small and close together for extra strength and I use my needle to manipulate the folded fabric as I go so that I get a neat fold. I also find that doing an extra stitch in the corner helps to reinforce the weakest point of the buttonhole. This should prevent fraying and tearing as the buttonhole gets used. I take my pins out as I go and I work around all four edges of the buttonhole. When I get back to my starting point, I overlap the stitches ever so slightly and then finish off my thread. 
I give the buttonhole another good press from the wrong side and use the nose of the iron to really give the welts a firm pressing. Then all that needs to be done is take out those final bits of tacking and the buttonhole is complete. If you have to do multiple buttonholes, I recommend working on them all simultaneously rather than one at a time. And if your fabric is really heavy, you can always use a contrasting fabric for the welts to reduce bulk. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.